It's the Mr. Fitzy Pain and Show. Robots, skeletons, and unicorns. Big wheels, elephants, and astronauts. It's the Mr. Fitzy Pain and Show. Painting can take you where you want to go. It's the Mr. Fitzy Pain and Show. Hi. Welcome to the Mr. Fitzy Painting Show. Today, we're going to take a trip to the jungle. And we're going to paint one of my favorite animals of all time, an elephant. Now, you might think that's kind of tough. Elephants are big, lots to paint. But don't worry, because we're going to go step by step and use shapes to paint our elephant. But before we get into the elephant, let's start with our background. Here's our canvas ready to go. I got my paint all mixed up on my palette. And I'm actually going to start and just make a couple of lines with a smaller detail brush. So I'm going to load up a little bit of brown on my brush dipping it in the water because in the background I've decided that I want a mountain. So I just want to remind myself where that mountain's going to go. Just with a little thin line. There we go. And up front I'll take some ochre because I'm going to have my elephant standing at the water hole. What's more important on a hot summer day in the jungle than a water hole? So that's where my water hole is going to be. So now I'll switch to my big brush, take some blue, and just start painting in my water. I've got a little bit of teal in there too. Some more green in that blue and a bit of a darker blue. Okay, now I'm gonna wash off my big brush and before I get too far with the background, I'm going to take my detail brush and load it up with black and just kind of do what artists call blocking in the shapes for my elephant. So first of all, I'm going to make a circle that's going to show just where my elephant's head will be. Elephants have big heads, so there we go. Then the trunk. He's going to be trumpeting towards the sky. So I make one line and then another line. It's not really a shape, but the trunk is kind of a squiggly part. And look at the end of the trunk I made by making a little backwards C. So you can try to do that. Always remember, if I go too fast, you can catch up. There will be plenty of time. Now for the ear, I'll make a couple of lines like that. Or the big ear that's hanging down. This is a profile of the elephant, so we kind of see one side of him. And I'm going to make a circle for where the eye is going to be. And then another curved line for the neck. 
and we're going to go all the way down in the front, right near the water hole, and make his leg and his foot. And then, let's curve up for the back of the elephant. Sometimes you have to just take a break and see how it's going. He looks pretty good to me. Elephants can have tusks, long teeth that actually come through the side of their head like that. So there's two tusks that come out. The second tusk, we'll only see some of it pointing up because the trunk is in the way. Maybe another curved line up there on the body. And let's make the bottom of the elephant. There's another curved line right there. And there's one of those back legs. There we go. Don't forget to put your brush in the water sometimes to be able to thin that paint out so you can spread it on there nice. There's his other back leg. And then up front, we have one more leg. Okay. So it might not be perfect, but that shows just about what our elephant's going to look like. And now I'm going to go and start to add a little more color first to my mountain. Maybe it's the morning time when the mountain looks kind of blue or purple. And it's also important to remember that you don't have to make things the colors that they really are. I think we're going to have a pretty colorful elephant today. Okay, going to work on some more trees. Maybe off to the side. There might be a tree like this. I'll start making it a little bit purple. Maybe some more of that ochre. Some branches of the trees that are hanging down and let's think about going to a bigger brush where some of those dark green can just kind of dab in. When you dab you make a little mark up and down. For, brand, for leaves on the tree. Now, I used a little bit of water with my paint, so it's a little drippy. You can always take a paper towel and wipe it a little bit if it gets too drippy before it dries. It won't matter if the green kind of smudges into the mountain. I'm going to try again with a medium sized brush. Get some more of the leaves of the tree so it seems like a summer day in the jungle where there's leaves and vines and all kinds of thick color in the jungle. Maybe some yellow green. Now I'm gonna think a little bit more about my elephant. I'm gonna mix some of my white with my black and maybe a little bit of that brownish umber color, tan, to make a color for my elephant's body. There we go. I like that gray. We're getting kind of 
Try to get a little thick for the elephant's wrinkly skin. And now you can see we cover in some of those lines where we blocked in the shape, like by the ear, so we can't see those anymore. But that's just what we want. There we go. Now we're getting some real thick paint on that elephant. What do we forget on our elephant? That's right, his tail. We're gonna have to remember to put that in. But for the tail, we'll need a smaller brush. So we're gonna hold off for a second on the tail. I'm gonna paint his head. Paint in his trunk. There we go. All right. I'm going to switch brushes. Load up my detail brush with some black and paint the tail on. I can start using my detail brush and wiggling it to make some of those wrinkles. Or if I covered up some of the legs, I can redraw them. Start putting on details like toenails. They're like little loops. And fill in some spots. Can even start to add in some of those other colors that I talked about to make my elephant unique with some different colors than you might expect. There's some squiggly purple and blues. I like it. Some people might say that's weird, but don't listen to them. You can make your picture any color you want. So if you want to make your elephant yellow, make your elephant yellow. I want to make a little black part for the other part of the ear on the other side of the head that we see kind of shining, peeking through from that side. Okay, now Let's go on and go back to our big brush and start thinking about the rest of this picture. Get a little more of our background in there. The water hole we got on there. Now let's get some of that dry summer ground with this tan kind of an umber color. Or tan maybe a yellow kind of a, mix some of the umber and some of the yellow there. Okay, there's the elephant standing on the ground. Now, I'm gonna make my mountain blue and purple. Sometimes in the morning time, the mountain might look like that when the sun's coming up and there's kind of some mists in the jungle. Don't be afraid to try something out in your painting. If it doesn't work out, that's okay. You can always try something different later. Ooh, here's a dark purple. That might be perfect. There we go. Now I'm getting somewhere. I like the way that mountain's starting to feel. Oh, I lost his tail again. Hmm. I'll have to go through with another color so I can see it against that purple mountain. All right. Time to take another step back and see how it's going. Looks pretty good. Even a little bit of that purple reflected in the water hole. 
the sky. I got a pretty good sky blue mixed up here. So I'm going to go through and put some more of that in there. Peeking through my trees and all around my elephant's trunk. Make sure you hold your brush like this like a pencil. This metal part is called the ferrule. I think I've told you that before. Then you get more control. Okay. Now we've got some good sky in there. Back to my tree. There's a good color tree. Mixing purple with my tan. That looks like a good jungle tree to me. Don't forget the branches. And some more of the green hanging down all around. All right. I'll take some more of my lizard and crimson. Start to really Try and feel how that elephant feels in the forest. There was a Japan Japanese painter, printmaker named Hokusai, and he said, in order to draw a bird, you must become a bird. And he knew that you can use your imagination to pretend you're a bird. And that will help you when you're making your picture. I'm putting some of this red where I'm outlining my elephant, even on the tail. There we go. It looks like his front leg needs some more wrinkles. And then some of this alizarin crimson, that's another word for this red violet, can be up there on top of the mountain. Sometimes I'll get a few drips, like right there. But you can leave the drips in. In painting, we call that expressionism. It means that the thick paint We'll show how you're feeling that day. I guess today, I'm feeling like an elephant. Gotta outline that water hole again. All right. Now, I know sometimes in the jungle, we have really bright colored flowers. So I'm going to take some bright red, red-orange paint and make some jungle flowers on the trees. It's really fun to use nice thick paint. So if you have temper paint, you can use your paint thick like this. But if you have watercolor paint, you can still use it with layers, one color on top of another. You can't use it quite as thick, but you can still have a fun time with it. There we go. I'm gonna give my elephant a bright red tail. Maybe he has a jungle flower on his tail. Okay. I wash my brush off, take a step back, think about how this is going. Look for some spots. I see one right away that I can fix up in between his back legs. Needs to be a little purple for the mountain. And there's a few spots back there. Maybe my mountain could have some more blue. 
turquoise. Yeah. The sun is shining off the top of the mountain. I'm thinking that it's the beginning of the day. That's where that misty purple mountain comes in and all this color. Hmm. But this side of the mountain, maybe I'll just leave purple. I kind of changed my mind, so. There we go. Back to that tree. Need some more ochre in there. Thicken it up a little bit. Maybe make some branches and some roots down there that go into the floor, the ground of the jungle. Maybe there's some grasses or some plants growing right around on that jungle ground by the water hole. Start to put some of theirs in, those in there. Just a little bit. Down by the bottom of the mountain, far away in the distance, there could be some green trees. So yeah, on this side of the mountain, instead of putting blue with my purple, I'll put some dark green for those trees that are far away. It looks like up top, I could use some more greens in my tree too. Hmm. Now, I don't think I really put in my elephant's mouth too well. I'm going to go in and give him a little smile, a thick blue smile. <clears throat> and yeah, I think I figured out what he needs. Water drops. He's squirting water from his trunk. That's one of the most fun things an elephant can do. And early in the morning on a hot summer day, He's decided to reach his trunk down and get some of that blue water from the water hole and squirt it all around. It's kind of like going through the sprinkler, but you just have your trunk. I can use different colors of blue. My darker blue and my lighter blue. There we go. Now I know why I didn't have the blue on that part of the mountain. Because I want to wait so I can put those drops in so we see them real well. Sometimes it takes a while, but once everything starts to come together on your painting, it's the best feeling there is. I'll put some drops on him. Maybe he squirted himself off too when he was squirting water in the air. Now, hmm, we're kind of getting towards the end here. Well, it looks like maybe still need a little more paint in my water hole. That's better. And maybe some more paint in that tree. There we go. I like that yellow and purple tree. And just another flower. 
maybe there's a couple of flowers floating in the water hole. All right. Gonna load up my brush with black and pick a spot for signing my painting. I always like to write my name. Some artists don't. Not that way you remember who made it. F I T Z. And the year is 2014. So I put a one and a four. F I T Z. Thank you for painting with me. I hope that you had just as much fun making your elephant in the jungle as I did. A couple of more leaves on the tree. And I think we will be finished. Hmm. That's exciting. Maybe one last thing. Load up my brush with this off-white. That means it's not a bleached white, but it looks more like ivory. And that's the color of elephant tusks. One, two. Put those in there. and blue and black all around, still outlining the tusks. And there you have it. Time to wash off my brush, take a look at it. I'm pretty happy with my elephant in the jungle. I hope that you get a chance <clears throat> to paint this summer and also to get outside and play in the water. Thanks for joining me on the Mr. Fitzy Painting Show. And until next time, see you in the studio. It's the Mr. Fitzy Painting Show. Skeletons and unicorns, big wheels, elephants, and astronauts. It's the Mr. Fitzy painting show. Painting can take.